Evacuation beginning. The 90s were a time of strange fashion sense and hilarious comedies. Evacuation complete. 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 Evacuation complete. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies of the 1990s. For our series on the top comedies of all time, we've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and of course, how funny they are. Excellent. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of comedic films from the 1930s to the 2000s. Number 10, American Pie. What exactly does third base feel like? Like warm apple pie. Before spawning multiple sequels and spin-offs, American Pie started off as a good old-fashioned teen comedy heavy on the raunchiness and cringe factor. Jim? Oh. oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. Jason Biggs Jim and the gang enter into a pact where each of them must lose their virginity before their high school graduation. We will get laid! Yeah. Meanwhile, Eugene Levy is simply hilarious as Jim's dad, who attempts to give his son uncomfortable advice. Do you know what a clitoris is? Oh my god. And cover up some embarrassing evidence. It's not what it looks like. Sure, it's gross, but it's also mindless fun, and it can even be sweet at times, too. Victoria, I love you. I love you. Oh! oh! Number nine, Happy Gilmore. Don't worry about that. It's made of wood. It's real sturdy. This Adam Sandler flick, similar to his other comedy classic, Billy Madison, proved that juvenile humor could work really well. I graduated. It's over, I did it. It was tough for me, so back off! Sandler stars as the titular character who can't quite make the leap into professional hockey playing. Instead, he turns his sights to the golf green and becomes a hit. Happy Gilmore balances Sandler's penchant for stock voices. Just tap it in, just tap it in, give it a little tappy. And violent physical comedy. with a down-to-earth love story that influenced his later films. Oh, no, thanks. I don't date golfers. All good, because I'm a hockey player. If his new stuff isn't your thing, at least this sports comedy is worth the rewatch. Where's the money, Lebowski? Number eight, The Big Lebowski. That or uh, his dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Things aren't easy for the dude when his lazy, laid-back lifestyle is turned upside down after he is caught up in a ransom and exploitation plot. Bummer. A cast of hilariously cartoonish characters provides the background comedy for Lebowski and his semi-religious friend. Lord, you can imagine where it goes from here. Who don't know what is really happening and just want to retrieve a carpet that really pulled the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? The film became a cult classic and spawned all kinds of dude-related merchandise and internet memes. You got the wrong guy, I'm the dude, man. But it's the crime comedy's surrealist humor that really sets The Big Lebowski apart from its contemporaries. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when you fuck a stranger in the air? That's what happens. You see what happens, Larry? I've got, got my, my pistol point cocked, ready to lay shots non-stop until I see your monkey ass drop. Number seven. Office space. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Peter Gibbons works an office job that he hates, but feels powerless to change his life. Ever since I started working, um, every single day of my life has been worse than the day before it. When a hypnotherapy session goes awry, he is left forever in a relaxed state and begins to deal with his work problems by simply ignoring them. It's 3.30, why aren't you at work? Because I, I, I didn't feel like it. The movie's comedy comes from an introspective look at daily office work and the zany characters therein. Ooh, yeah, um, 
I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. Office Space is also extremely relatable, features great casting, and is a cult favorite. I guarantee you fright, because I am the verge of knocking the cult, but I'm down for no reason. Once I get down, I'll be no reason. Number six, Wayne's World. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Before Austin Powers, there was Wayne's World. Wayne's World! Wayne's World! Party time! Mike Myers and Dana Carvey star as Wayne and Garth, based on their SNL characters of the same name. You know, I love what you do on the show. <laughs> I mean, I look at you and I just laugh and laugh. The Saturday Night Live sketches became so popular that this big screen adaptation was made. What a totally amazing, excellent discovery. Not! Myers' noted style of self-reflexive comedy shines through in this movie, and the fourth wall doesn't remain intact for too long. My name is Wayne Campbell. I live in Aurora, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. His chemistry with Carvey is undeniable, and they managed to bring the laughs with the help of many pop culture references, unforgettable catchphrases, and more. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Now, you want to give me a push while you're back there, pal? Ah! All right, man. Number five. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. It's alive! It's alive! At his peak, Jim Carrey was pulling in audiences everywhere with his zany performances and particular slapstick style. In this film, he plays a wacky detective who focuses on finding missing animals. That's what turns me on about you. Your attention to detail. With his trademark elastic face, acrobatic physical comedy excuse me i'd like to ask you a few questions and ridiculous delivery carrie made us keel over in laughter with pet detective <laughs> he also showed us that he takes his job very seriously and always gets his man or animal that's it einhorn is finkel finkel is einhorn einhorn is a man oh my God! Einhorn is a man! God. D plus? Oh my God. I pass. Number four, Tommy Boy. That's my name! In one of his few big screen appearances, Chris Farley plays a screw up who inherits his father's company. Cool. Farley stars opposite David Spade, and the two work together just as well as they did in their SNL days. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know, they're called doctors. Farley was best known for his physical comedy, and in Tommy Boy, he truly pulls out all the stops. Look out, I've got cat-like speed and reflexes. Popular with moviegoers upon its release, the road comedy is also often considered a must-watch 90s comedy classic. I'm a maniac, maniac on the floor, and I'm dancing like I've never danced before. Number three, there's something about Mary. Her name was Mary. She moved to our little Rhode Island town from Minnesota two years earlier. Ben Stiller pulls out the big guns in this gross-out romantic comedy about a guy who can't stop thinking about his high school crush. You found her. Oh, yeah. You were right, man. She really is something else. Oh, my God. Most of the humor is pretty vulgar, but that's what makes There's Something About Mary so fun to watch. Between getting his crotch caught in his zipper... Ow! ...and getting a fish hook in his mouth... <laughs> Stiller does a lot of great physical comedy that keeps us all entertained. I'm sorry! <laughs> Meanwhile, his off-kilter chemistry with Cameron Diaz just adds that little something extra to the outrageous obsession premise. What is that? Hmm? On your ear. Ear? No, your left ear. Can I show you something? If you're feeling sad and Number two, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Who is this Austin Powers? The ultimate gentleman spy, irresistible to women, deadly to his enemies, a legend in his own time. Straight from the mind of SNL alum Mike Myers, this spy movie spoof hit theaters in a big way. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, baby! <laughs> Spawning several sequels and Halloween costume ideas for years to come. Very shagadelic! Austin Powers pokes fun at all the classic Bond movie tropes. It's a very groovy time. <laughs> while pulling off an engaging story with memorably insane characters. One million dollars. Even today, the jokes are still side-splittingly funny, and Meyer's performances have us howling with laughter. Do I make you horny, Randy? Do I make you horny, baby? Yes! Before we unveil our pick for comedy of the 1990s, here are a few honorable mentions. Hello! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to frighten you, dear. I must look like a yeti in this get-up. Well, no, she does a lot for you. She's my girlfriend. I had some girlfriends, too, but all I wanted from you was reading shit. I don't even have to floss. hear the most annoying sound in the world? Number one, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, what is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. Jim Carrey was a hot property in the 90s, but no matter how many movies he starred in, he still managed to keep things fresh. Hey, I guess they're right. In Dumb and Dumber, he stars as Lloyd Christmas opposite Jeff Daniels' Harry Dunn as two best friends without a brain cell between them. You're it. You're it. You're it. Quitsies! Any quitsies. You're it. Quitsies. No, any quitsies. No startsies. You can't do that! In an attempt to return some lost property and get the girl, the pair sets out on a road trip and makes friends on their adventure. Rock, sing, pig, sing, bird, sing. While the flick is inarguably dumb, Everything from its dream sequences to the toilet scene will still make you bust a gut, as there are simply no boundaries left uncrossed. <laughs> That's thanks to the Farrelly brothers' comedic writing, and they're the same force behind the equally brilliant but dumb bowling comedy, Kingpin. Which opponent poses the biggest threat to you in the tournament? <laughs> if I get drunk and fall down, hurt myself, I might lose. Do you agree with our list? That was awesome. What's your favorite 1990s comedy? Monkeys might fly out of my butt. For more hilarious top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Personally, before I'm on the job, I like to give my undercarriage a bit of a how's your father.